I have taught tens of thousands of students in the classroom over my teaching career. And one of the biggest mistakes I have routinely seen with students is not taking directional terminology seriously enough. And what ends up happening for them is they get confused in those early stages and then they're not able to pay attention well enough because they're kind of like in their head during the lecture. And then before they know it, they're halfway through the course and they just have no idea what's going on. So it's not to say that directional terminology is the only reason for that. It's just that you always want to give yourself every bit of confidence in those early stages so that you can really you know, not have to think about it. So this is what I want us to do today is we're going to be looking at these terms medial and lateral and making sure that you understand these just immediately. There should be no hesitation when these terms come across, because if you are hesitating, then you are not listening. You are not paying attention to the lecture and you can miss other important things. So um, what you're looking at here, and by the way, afterwards, what we're going to do is go and check out some examples uh, of where medial and lateral can be very, very useful. So um, what you're looking at here is a really great image that kind of like sums up a whole bunch of terms all at once. And I know our goal with this video isn't to go into each and every one of them, but everything I'm about to say is true for all of them as well, right? You should be able to look at every single one of these and immediately be able to discuss what it means. Again, no hesitation, but what you're also seeing are these planes so again, uh, we're not focusing too much on the planes right now, but you can see we have the sagittal plane. We have, uh, where are the terms, coronal plane, <laughs> and then you have the transverse plane. My point is just that these are anatomical planes that basically just correspond with three directions of space, right? You can go forward, you can go backwards, you can go left and right, and you can go up and down. That's exactly what these are trying to show you. And um, so you can see these different arrows. But again, our focus is going to be on lateral and medial. And you can see that this individual here is in anatomical position. Another absolutely essential thing to understand because the anatomical position is the reference point that everyone is assuming in Western medicine. Um, so like if we so that's the thing It's like if we are to say that something is lateral or medial to another structure, well, that only makes sense if we are assuming the anatomical position. If you're assuming it's like more traditional Chinese medicine position, medial and lateral are gonna to start to be different. And so we just have to really kind of think about things in, with the proper orientation. And so um, also it's important to know that lateral and medial, as are pretty much all of these terms, going to be comparative terms, right? So for example, uh, I'm gonna say something that just does not make sense. And that is, the shoulder is lateral, right? Like that just doesn't make sense. Like what lateral to what? What are we discussing here? What do we mean here, right? So we need to be able to say that it's lateral to something else or medial to something else. They are comparative terms. You always want to be finding something to compare another thing to with them. So with that, lateral and medial are also going to be assuming a midline. So you can see like this dotted line here that is going, this is trying to show you there is a midline to the body. And if you look really closely, you can even see there's a little bit of shading. You can see this line is going down this dotted line. And what that's showing you is that there is a midline to the body. Now, um, you, you don't always have to assume that the midline is in the exact body. Like, so for example, you could assume a midline of the hand. Uh, you like, as long as you yourself are defining a midline, like you can make a midline wherever you want, honestly, and then you can start to use medial and lateral respective to that line. But for now, our focus is going to be purely on the center of the body. So I want you to imagine there's just this center line, this midline going through the body. Well, if we are going towards that, right? So you can see these two arrows right here on the thigh. You see an arrow going towards the midline over here. You can see another arrow going towards the midline here. That is the medial direction. So medial just means you are going towards the midline. Whereas lateral, we can see that the arrows are going away. So we're looking at the shoulders here. So you're going away from the midline. So medial is towards and lateral is away. That is basically it. And so I can just give you a couple quick examples and then we're actually going to switch our view here and start looking at something else or a few other things to kind of make sure we are dialed in and understanding this. So like if I were to say the shoulders are lateral to the sternum, 
What I'm really saying here is that the shoulders are farther away from the midline than the sternum is. Okay, but I also could have said that the shoulders are lateral to the clavicle. I could have also said that the shoulders, or rather, there's a really, you can feel this on yourself. If you feel the tip or peak of your shoulder, there's a bony prominence there called the acromion process. And that acromion, which means peak of the shoulder, that is like, let's, let's say that part right there. We could also say that the acromion is lateral to the superior angle, which is really only about a centimeter or two, or maybe like an inch away from each other. But the, the fact is it's still farther away from the midline than the other structure. So lateral is just saying you are farther away from the midline, whereas medial, we're just saying you are closer to the midline. So if we wanted to, we could use those exact same examples. We could say that the sternum is medial to the shoulder. We could say that the clavicle is medial to the shoulder. Um, in fact, let's actually look at the hand here. I think this is a real easy example to take a look at. And then after this one, I think we'll look, switch pictures and we'll check out some other examples. But if we like look at the hand again from anatomical position, the palms are always going to be facing forward or anteriorly or ventrally. And so what that means is we can definitively say that the thumb or digit one is lateral to the pinky or digit five. We can say that again because from anatomical position, that's the position the hands are going to be in is facing forward. So, but I want you to just think to a second, I'll even give you a quick second to think about this yourself. Um, and I know these are kind of small, so maybe like you could even use your own hand. Um, but again, put it in anatomical position. So the thumb is actually facing, right? It's going laterally. Um, I want you to ask yourself, is your middle finger or digit three medial or lateral to your ring finger? So again, is the middle finger medial or lateral to the ring finger? So again, we are assuming this midline here in the body, and that is the direction we're going to be going with. Well, in that instance, the middle finger is lateral to the ring finger, right? So the middle finger is heading away from the midline or is farther away from the midline than that ring finger or digit four would be. Again, though, you know, we can play a game of like putting and creating our own midline and we can start having a lot of fun with it. But I think, you know, just from the ultra, ultra basic standpoint, this is a great place to be. So let's go ahead and check out a different picture so that we can start kind of dialing into this more. Okay, so what you're looking at now is an anterior view of the abdomen. So you're looking at the internal organs. We can see um, the stomach. You can see the liver. We have some retractors kind of like reflecting those back. So lifting up the liver, you can see the gallbladder. You can see uh, this hepatic flexure where the ascending colon is turning into the transverse colon. All this like drooping fat is like this fatty apron that goes over your small intestine called the greater omentum. You can even see part of the lesser omentum back there. You can see ribs. You can see all this kind of stuff. There's a lot to look at and it's really, really cool. Our focus though, is figuring out which is lateral, which is medial. And so the reason why I wanted to take this view is because we're not seeing something that is symmetrical, right? So you can see the stomach is going to be located on the left side of the body. Remember you're looking, this is like you're looking at someone in anatomical position. And so the stomach is gonna be on the left, the liver and the gallbladder are going to be on the right. So we have to then ask ourselves, okay, um, where, Okay, now that we know what we're looking at, you know, like where is the midline? And so remember the midline is going to be basically um, in the center of the body. Again, we could choose to put it somewhere else, but it's gonna be running down the center. So if we assume that, here is my question to you. And what I wanna do is I just wanna start like kind of quiz quizzing you with a few questions, seeing how you're responding. So for first off, is the gallbladder, which is this thing right here, is the gallbladder lateral or medial to the stomach? Is the gallbladder lateral or medial to the stomach? And this is going to be the stomach. So this is kind of an interesting question to think about because the stomach is going away from the midline as well. However, it's also curving over towards the midline. 
So we have a portion of the stomach which it itself is kind of in the lateral direction, but we also have a portion of the stomach. This is called the pylorus and the antrum, and then we have the body as it's turning into the duodenum. These are going to be running right into that midline. So it's like, this is where the, like, how you ask the question is going to be very important because by just saying that is the gallbladder lateral or medial to the stomach. Well, since I didn't specify which part of the stomach, I would say that this, the gallbladder is definitely going to be lateral to the stomach because sure enough, there's a midline right here. Now, if I had said, so you can see right here, this is called the cardia, uh, this little highlighted portion. Um, if I said, is it lateral or medial? This is where we're getting into tougher territory because, um, because the cardia is actually kind of lateral as well. So, I mean, obviously it is medial in some sense and lateral in some sense. And this is where I get to have this conversation about the imperfection or, um, what am I trying to say here? Just the, 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 the nature of language really <laughs> in that the it, language isn't always as precise as we want it to be. And so in anatomy, you have to find different terms sometimes to really help with what you're doing. And so what I would say is when you get into this point, I don't think asking where the gallbladder is in relation to the cardia is a useful thing in many contexts to say lateral or medial. Um, instead, I would be like, well, the cardia is going to be in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. The the gallbladder is going to be in the upper right quadrant. And maybe we could do a video kind of breaking down the different quadrants of the abdomen. I think that might be really useful. My point is lateral and medial are really only one set of terms. And in anatomy, we have a lot of different terms to help you be as precise as possible. So sometimes you're going to run into something and you're like, you know, maybe... Maybe that's not the right term for this job. Maybe I want to actually find something else that is going to be more useful in language. And I think this is all some, this is something we all kind of naturally do is we're just communicating with each other. You know, I'm doing it right now. I'm just sitting there like thinking, I'm like, is imperfection like what? How do I like figure out the right word for you know right now? You know, that's a it's a challenge. It can be a challenging thing. And so my point is simply, uh, you want to find. So, but let's give you some more clear examples. So um, let's say the um, ascending colon here. Is the ascending colon lateral or medial to the gallbladder? This is going to be lateral, right? Because again, we're assuming that midline and they're both going to be on the right side. That makes perfect sense. The ascending colon is definitely going to be. Now, um, could we say, all right, um, so this is like the falsiform ligament, right? So like if we were to look at this one, uh, this one right here is going to be splitting the actual uh, liver. So different lobes of the liver. Is this going to be medial or lateral to the fundus of the stomach? And let's see if I have fundus on here. Aha, this is the fundus, right? So basically is this right here, this little line, kind of get that off of here. Is that actually going to, <laughs> it jumps right back on, um, get it to show up here. Okay, is this going to be medial or lateral to the actual fundus? Can be medial. I mean, this is basically right in the midline. Uh, this is going to run right just so this is like right where your xiphoid process is, more or less. Um, so yeah, this is going to be medial. Um, how about this? Here's a really interesting one is the esophagus lateral or medial to the duodenum? So the esophagus is right here. Again, this is actually an example of where that is not the best term. I mean, could you say it's medial? I could, I could see that argument. I just don't think it's the more precise term because here's the duodenum, here's the esophagus. I think we just kind of want to ask ourselves, all right, uh, you know, like, yes, this is towards that midline more so than this one, but it just seems like we're kind of doing mental gymnastics. All right, so let's go ahead and check out another image to make sure that we're really understanding this. All right, so what you're looking at here is a chest x-ray. Now they're hi they've highlighted the humerus um, in this image, but if I cycle to the next one, you can see that we've highlighted the lungs. Now this is going to be a more practical example of when medial and lateral can be very useful, right? Because say like if you were a radiologist, you know, precision is you know, the name of the game because you need to be able to look at this image and know exactly where everything should be so that you can decide and determine where something shouldn't be. And um, you can look for anomalies and everything like that. So the ability to really and deeply understand exactly where you are is very important. So let's take a look at these lungs. Um, would you say that the lungs are lateral or medial to the heart? 
And so again, you're not a radiologist, but you know, give it, well, maybe you are. Give this your best shot. Yeah, so the lungs are going to be lateral to the heart. And this is a good example of where, you know, sometimes we can just kind of like, um, you know, you can use mo like three things at once to basically compare to each other, right? Because you have two lungs and you have one heart, so therefore you have three things. Um, let's actually then say, okay, are the lungs medial or lateral to the shoulders? Yeah, the lungs are going to be medial to the shoulders. So the shoulder is kind of like this broad area. I mean, you have a literal shoulder joint, but when we say shoulder, it's kind of a little more broad. Typically people are talking just about like this thing, but I think everyone can understand that the lungs are going to be medial to them on both sides. Absolutely. But let's say, okay, let's say, um, is the right lung medial or lateral to the left lung? And that's where, again, now things are starting to fall apart. I wouldn't say that. I would just say, well, the right lung is on the right side of the thorax, and then the left lung is going to be on the left side of the thorax. Again, just showing just how, you know, let's always search for the more precise word. So, look, again, I know this is pretty straightforward and simple, and I imagine, you know... Um, a lot of a lot of times you feel like this kind of stuff is something like, I don't know if I need to watch a video or if I need to really dial this in. But I mean, like if you ever find yourself confused on any of this medical terminology, I really do think that it is worth exploring and just making sure that a shadow of a doubt, you understand exactly what that means so that you do not have to be lost in the middle of lecture and things just start to fall apart. But go ahead and uh, let us know in the comments below if you could, if you enjoyed this video, that is. You know, what else you'd like to see us discuss? You know, like there's so much anatomy out there, but we're always looking to kind of, um, you know, build off of it and, 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 and do it in a way that you are actually going to want to pay attention to. So by the way, everything we went over today, you're going to find a link down in the description below. This is, these are all coming from 100% free Ken Hub articles. At the same time, while you're down there, kind of zoom out here, I'll show you what else Ken Hub has to offer as I go down. We're going to have, um, parts of our atlas images you can see all sorts of like i mean if you have not explored the radiological aspect of the platform you are in for a real treat um you know especially for those who are just going on the clinical side of things this is this is essential and you know something that we are really really proud of because you know it's there's a lot of anatomy that you have to understand when it comes to radiology and everything i'm showing you right now is 100 percent free so i really encourage you to do that but if you also want to become a premium uh, can have, uh, uh, subscriber, then what you can also do is have access to our quizzes, which by the way, you can go ahead and just jump on here and test these out yourself to see if you're liking it. I think that would be a lot of fun and definitely valuable. But, um, anyways, I, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did go ahead and hit that like button, that'll help this video get out to more people. But as always, I appreciate you spending time with me and I will see you in the next one.